a Stuart Models beam engine rebuild. This is part 5. Working on the base. The base of the engine is a bit of a mess. It's been badly damaged at some time and brazed back together. And although the brazing is of good quality, it's still a bit lumpy on the outside and on the inside. The inside's not really an issue, no one sees that. But it's covered in old flux and that wants removing too. So I'm starting first with my 4 inch belt sander and now I'm moving on to my 1 inch belt sander to remove all the lumpiness on the outside of the casting. I don't know what happened to the base in the first place, whether it was dropped on the floor, because it's quite a substantial cast iron base, and if you drop it on the floor, the weight of it would damage it badly. When using a belt sander, as I'm showing in the video clip on screen at the moment, you have to be very careful not to take too much of the metal away. And it's quite difficult to control a big lump of metal up against a moving sanding belt, and it's very easy to dig lumps out of the casting, and I don't want to do this because I'll only have to fill them. I think for this job I do prefer to use a file. I have more control and I can actually see what I'm doing. This is a new file. I bought it from Blackgates Engineering a while ago and I haven't used it until now. And because it's very new, it's very sharp. And in no time at all I knock the casting into shape. I'm going to try and paint this part without removing all the old paint and just see what happens. I'm spraying it with some etching primer. This brand of etching primer is my current flavour of the month. It's from a company up north here called Auto Paint Northern. That's their website address on the screen. This is a really high quality paint. It covers beautifully and once it's stuck to the metal, it's really stuck to the metal. What I'm concerned about though is the fact that there is still some original paint on this piece of metal and I think it's reacting with the etching primer. The original paint is starting to bubble, so there's only one thing for it. I put the spray can into reverse and then I unpaint the part. If only it was so easy. No, I actually used a cloth to wipe off the paint whilst it was still wet. What I'm going to have to do is remove this paint. So first of all I'm starting with my finger which is never a good idea. And then I move on to some very coarse sandpaper and this is tearing the paint off the piece of metal. The way I normally remove paint from small steam engine parts is to immerse them in a tub full of this stuff, standard cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner. But unfortunately this part will not fit in the tub, so I'm applying the thinners with the paintbrush and then I'm scrubbing it off with a wire brush. And this is very labour intensive, very messy and very smelly. And one more time it's worth remembering that if you're doing a job like this you need to do it in a very well ventilated area. I'm in the outer part of my workshop, right next to a wide open door. Any solvents can be dangerous and cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner is no exception. You don't want to be breathing this stuff in. And nor do you want to handle the stuff and get it on your fingers because apparently you can absorb it through your skin. I live in a small village in the East Riding of Yorkshire. That's in the north of England and luckily in the village, right at the bottom of the village, is a place called Powder and Paint. And guess what they do? They do sandblasting, shot blasting and powder coating. So I took this repaired beam engine base down to Mark at Powder and Paint and this is how it came back. I was very pleased and very surprised when Mark said, I'll come back in a couple of hours and I'll have it done for you. And here it is. You can see the quality of the braze. The braze is quite good. This of course is after I filed and sanded the braze joint. In the north of England it is very wet, and just recently, in fact for most of the year, it's been very wet almost all of the time. So I didn't waste any time painting this part, I didn't want it to go rusty. So off I go with the etch primer once again. The only difference is, this time there's no original paint left to react with the etch primer, so I can apply a good coat and leave it to dry. Here's a shot of the painting, it's speeded up slightly as usual. And from this clip you will notice that I always put the piece of metal that I'm painting on a couple of flat pieces of wood. That way it makes it very easy to rotate the piece of metal without it picking up any dirt from the bench. Just in case you're interested, here's a shot of the paint drying. And here's a shot a few hours afterwards and the paint has dried. As you can see though, it's still not a good finish and I'm going to need to fill this. But before filling it, I would generally use etch primer first, that way you can see where you're filling. I'm not going to use car body filler though, I'm going to use JB Weld, which is a very strong two-pack epoxy resin. 
This is a 24 hour version, so it takes 24 hours before it cures. And here's a shot of me mixing it together. It's a two pack mix, but you must make sure that you mix the parts very evenly. Initially, I'm applying the JB Weld using the mixing stick. This is a piece of mahogany planking, like I would use on a model boat. It's a good idea when filling any imperfections in metal not to apply too much filler because don't forget you have to rub it down. And this JB Weld stuff is very tough and it's difficult to rub down sometimes. Although I do have the time and patience and equipment to allow this to be successful. And JB Weld is far stronger than car body filler and it doesn't chip as easily. This by the way is not my current debit card, it's a long since expired one that I keep in the workshop. And it's absolutely ideal for this job. A credit card would be just as good, but this is a debit card. And that's about it. I'll leave you with a special treat. This is a shot of some JB Weld curing over a 24 hour period. Life is just so exciting. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.